Okay, so this presentation is not about the last panel system per se, it's about how we use the last panel system path clearing approach, which is Emmanuel's work, uh, Christine is a supervisor, uh, to address resistance to the last panel system and really organisational culture cons uh, constraints. So it's from the same company we were talking about earlier on today. Uh, NTU project we said earlier on today, 27 months, organisation X, uh, and it was from a business perspective to project delivery. So this is what we're looking at really here. Um, so we've seen this schematic earlier on, um, you know, and th the premise of this presentation is the last panel system is not being used as, as intended as well. Um, it's been misunderstood, it's been misused, it's m a lot more than post-its on the wall, um, and it's, it really is desirable. It's the gateway to desirable behaviors. So it emerged from practice, you know, Glenn and Greg developed this through action research 25, 30 years ago, it's, you know, it's been developing since then. Um, the benefits are well documented everywhere, great benefits, you know, but it's, it's, it's still not common practice. There's more input starting to go into it, like the language action perspective, stuff on flow and the flow walks we were talking about earlier on, so it's still really developing. Um, but the context of the path clearing approach development, so it was really, um, uh, Manuel noticed and it had empirical evidence that there's partial implementation of the last panel system, you know, when it's often stalling a can, and it was really focused on just on projects. So they took a step back. Uh, to produce some guidance for a broader approach of what needs to be in place from the organization. So what needs to set the culture and the environment to make glass panel system a success. So this is really about culture and environment. Um, so how do we move from partial implementation to realizing all those benefits that are up there? Well, it's the path clearing approach. You know, so the, the people here on the, on the ice they're removing the constraints so that ball can get to where it needs to go. So the path clearing approach is removing these organizational and cultural constraints so the last panel system can realize all those benefits. So what do we do? So uh, on this project, I'm looking back at this, this presentation through the lens of the path clearing approach because it stalled after the fourth implementation. Okay. Uh, and we took a step back, we retrospectively looked at the power clearing approach to see what we had in place and what was missing. Uh, and this is what we found. So these are the step actions, I slightly modified them from uh, a manual. Uh, but these are the step actions that we, that we used. Uh, and we looked at what was in place and what was missing. Uh, so first of all, when we started the project, uh, the company had engaged with NTU, so with myself and Christine, uh, which were proven last manner system experts. So I suppose if I take a step back, before we had the fourth implementation, before we started on site, there was a continuous improvement manager there. He was Toyota trained, uh, and he'd made two attempts to implement the last panel system. And it was pretty bad. Uh, he'd built up a lot of resistance. The mood had really gone terrible. Um, so it was, the mood was not good. Um, the need for the last panel system was identified because the, no project was delivered on time, no project finished on time, and so that was the need for the last panel system. Um, so I was talking about the moods there that were present. So when we kicked off, when we kicked off the last panel system was the third implementation, uh, and we were asked to do an off-site workshop day. Uh, and this is a workshop day I've done many times in the States that worked really well. Uh, we used the Vallejo simulation, Alan and Glenn would know about that. Um, but what we, what we found out retrospectively is that the mood in the organization from the ongoing continuous improvement initiatives, uh, from the resistance that was built up, the passive resistance, the mood was not good. So can you, we can't really see the screen here, but can you imagine, can you think what mood was in the organization if they didn't want the last panel system to work? Well, it's these, it's these ones here in black. The, and so we found this out many months later, that these were present in the organization when we were trying to get the last panel system off the ground. And you can forget about it. It's, <laughs> it's just not gonna happen. Um, so these are what we had in place. Uh, during the kickoff, we adopted a standard approach. So this is an approach that worked very well in the States. We had this in place, uh, and we went to implement the last panel system. But what happened was, did the kickoff, and then I was denied access to the team for around 10 weeks for various different reasons. So as soon as we started the project, they, got, you know, they, were, they could see the benefits. They were talking to each other. They found loads of constraints, but they just stopped. So the external coach, the facilitator, 
had to step away, and they just stopped using it again. So it stalled again. Um, so 10 weeks later, we came back, uh, and before we restarted again, we created a, a kind of a, not a big room, but a, a, a planning room. So we created a space to, to have their phase plans and put their boards up and have their metrics up. So we, we had this in place. Now, we, we weren't using the park clearing approach at this stage. We've just identified what we had in place at that time. And we were also coaching the PMs, and the PM wanted to take ownership, of, well, supposedly wants to take ownership of this. So we're trying to transfer ownership. So the human and the physical enablers. Uh, but what we found then, after it stalled again for the third time, that these three things were missing. You know, retrospectively, you know, there was no imperative for the last planning system and lean leadership. And there was no strategic, strategic ability to support the implementation. Uh, and then there was no awareness of why we were there. You know, as a NTU, we were almost just dropped into this organization and they pretty much thought we were going to wave a magic wand. They didn't know why we were there, basically. Um, so before we started our fourth implementation, we took all the learning that we had, you know, what, what we needed to do, and fed that back into what we were going to do in the fourth go. So again, we hadn't used this at all. We were just looking back retrospectively. Uh, we developed an implementation strategy, how we were going to withdraw and coach the PM, and, and people were starting to turn up autonomously for, for, um, for daily huddles and turn up to update the boards. And, you know, things were actually, I thought, were on the up. We thought, hmm, they're actually working. Um, we created some ground rules for the team, you know, suggested the ground rules because we had this passive resistance where, you know, they just stay quiet. So I had to suggest some ground rules and see would these work for you guys, like turning up on time and moving your own tags, writing your own tags, all the st soft skills that you need to use the last pattern system properly. So, so we had that in place. Uh, we also produced some facilitator checklists. So uh, I spoke with a few people at IGLC Boston about these. So produced these on request to somebody else. So when, when we weren't going to be there, they had something to gauge their practice. So tick off where they were, what they were doing, what they needed to do to prompt them. Um, and that's just an example of the facilitator checklist. And it's just a prompt to see are you doing this right or wrong or you know somewhere to go from. Um, so we thought going to Boston, IGLC in Boston, we thought, do you know what? The narrow and deep approach is actually starting to work, you know, which is normal. You do narrow and deep, and this is what you do to get it to work. And went away to Boston. I remember talking to loads of people, saying, oh, "I think actually starting to get a bit of traction. Um, narrow and deep is working." So went to Boston, and you know, I was actually excited about coming home. I thought there was going to be loads of facilitator checklists filled out, and yeah, I was like pretty excited. Um, so these are the step actions we had in place after our fourth implementation. Uh, and at the fourth implementation, the PM had publicly, who was resistant before, publicly said, it's not what I think this is actually starting to work. I never thought I'd say that. You know, you were there, you were there Christine. Um, you know, they'd reduced our schedules by 25%. They got loads of benefits out of it. You know, the, the, I, it's hard to understand why they just stopped. So we came back from Boston, and that's the last panel system. Just <laughs> fell off the cliff. Zero, stopped completely dead. Uh, so I was away, the head of the department was away, and then the PM decided, ah, do you know what, we'll just, we'll just pick it up in a few weeks. You know, we'll get back to it. Didn't it? And this is the guy who was really getting benefit out of it. So we, we were like, right, <laughs> time to take a step back. And this is when we looked at the last panel system path clearing approach. We were asked to drive it forward again, and we just said, no, there's no point, you know? So falling off the cliff and we took a step back then to see where we needed to go. So there are your step actions. That's what we had in place before we go. So we had quite a significant few step actions in place before we went away. Um, but then what we did was we took a deep dive into the current planning issues. So just took a step back, I interviewed maybe 13, 15 people, you know, asked them what's working, what's not working, you know, what's the good things about the last planning system, what's, you know, what, what don't you like, so forth. It was just really flushed out the issues. We reported that in our paper last year. Uh, and then we evaluated against last panel system principles. So really, we were able to come back to them with some real data. Uh, as part of that, we did eight projects, and we took the P6 schedules, and just looked at, what I, as I said earlier on, what percentage of items were complete. You know, so Mark showed, I think it was 240 items in total or something, and 25% was done. So the, the PPC was 25%. 
reported us back to the PMs, and it was like, yeah, that sounds about right. Like, you know, no shock at all. I was like, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. So, <laughs> um, okay, uh, so prevailing issues, we, uh, we said, talked about this earlier on. The innovation initiative fatigue was the big thing, really, and then the distrust in the last planner system. Um, but afterwards, we found, you know, we were talking about the last planner system, and a guy in the, in the company called it the beast, you know. And this is somebody who wasn't even involved in the last planner system. So this is the name that we got, the beast. <laughs> um, we had to go undercover. So this is covert operations because we had to remove everything to do with the last planner system to get something to stick. Um, and we did this by introducing bi-weekly team hub meetings. Um, and that was abstract and last planner system thinking and principles and different elements of it out of it, not telling them what they were doing and introducing them. So we don't have to read them, but there was kind of key things there that we did and there's the step actions beside it. Um, and then I facilitated a study action team around a book called Team of Teams. Uh, and this was really covert to ask them questions, to get them thinking, how would something like this work in your organization? Um, so they came, they came back to me then and asked, oh, Paul, maybe could we set up some sort, something like this? Which gave me some, a bit of a platform to build on the um, team hub meetings and the agenda that we had. So this was not narrow and deep, but this was shallow and wide. You know, going across the organization, all the different projects, and abstracting the principles. Uh, so the business delivery meeting, we had each project in the department has a metric sheet. You can't really see that. Um, but we asked each project manager every Friday morning, and this still goes on today, every project manager gets asked, tell us your project's PPC, and they write it down here. Uh, what are you doing to address miscommitments? And they write their miscommitments in here, 1 to 15, whatever that uh, goes against. How many promises have we got for next week? Which of these are your priorities? Who do you need to support you with these? Uh, and is there anything that will stop you from fulfilling your promises over the next two weeks? And lo and behold, nobody ever ticks yes. So if they tick yes or, or tick no over here, what should their PPC be every week? Yep, yeah, and it's not. So, not. so this is another example of making ready or not making ready. And then we had another one down here for metric sheets completed. So trying to instill a bit of discipline, we had to put this in to get them to tick to say it was complete. But it wasn't long before they were just gaming the system with that as well and just ticking for the sake of ticking. Um, so um, business delivery meeting, PPC ran for 25%, the trend's around 75% now at the moment. So what we, we had to abstract the principles and do it in a completely different way to improve business performance. Uh, we had, we had leadership for the last panel system in place because we now had the heads of the department facilitating the business delivery meeting. It happened on time every week. It happened, finished on time. You know, okay. Um, I shaded in the strategic capability because that's improved, but it hasn't really been there. Um, so behavior, this is an interesting one, behaviors arising from the contract. So we were, we were due to have another pilot, you know, project with the last panel system, ridiculous pilot. Um, and we wanted to make sure we had all these in place, so we got, we got a, an appendix written into the contract. Um, everything, we had all these things in place for the whole project. We had almost everything in place. Um, but what was missing, we found, was uh, leadership for the last panel system. The PM was just paying lip service. You know, everything was in place. I mean, they, the, the contractor was even paid to do this, I'm sure. You know, every, everything. All about everything was in place. They had a dedicated cabin, which never got used. They got boards, they stationery, they everything. They made me there to help them, everything. But the PM was just paying lip service. And my takeaway, and my takeaway before I even went there, if you haven't got the PM or the site manager bought in, just forget about it. Just don't even waste your time. That's my takeaway. Um, conclusions, lean leadership is, that is the key. You know, and having somebody who knows what they're doing with the last panel system and understands the industry they are working in. The CI manager, say, oh, the trained, didn't understand the industry and certainly didn't understand the last panel system and built up all that resistance, which I'm glad he did because I've learned a hell of a lot from him. Um, informal leaders, so at the start, you had the informal leaders who were just uh, talking behind my back and, you know, everybody was t talking about the last panel system and how it would never work here, but nobody ever understood it. Um, coach, really important to have a coach. You know, if you go to the gym, you have a personal trainer, you need somebody to help you. Uh, there we go, I've said that already. 
don't rush to implement it. You know, don't just go and implement it. Really, you have to understand the prevailing issues in the current state. You know, that was a learning that we had. We, we rushed to implement because they asked us to. And we, you know, we thought we could. Normally, you could. Um, how ready is the organization? This organization was not ready. I think it's ready now. Uh, the last one, if organizations are really serious about implementing it, they will consider the last panel system path clearing approach before, after, during they engage with a consultant. Thank you.